The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And welcome to today's webinar, What's Up in Downtown Westminster. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. A few logistics before we get underway. Um, you should see a control panel on the right-hand side of your screen and a drop-down that says questions slash chat. Please use that section to drop your questions into that you may have throughout this webinar. Uh, I'd like to make note that we do have uh, about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, John's going to present for about the first 25 to 30, and we'll use the last 25 to 30 to answer any questions that you may have. Note that we will also be recording this webinar, um, and it will be posted to the Economic Development website after it wraps up, along with a copy of this PowerPoint for you to reference at a later time. Now that all of that is out of the way, my name is Shelby Wood, and I am the Business Resource Management Analyst here at the City and the Department of Economic Development. We've worked over the last year to um, develop these virtual trainings and webinars to try to remain connected with you and your business. In the past few months, we've offered city-specific trainings on things like irrigation, homelessness, city resources, and now this one on what's going on in the new downtown. Uh, I'd like to also note that we partnered with the North Metro Small Business Development Center to focus on uh, to host a variety of topics that are more geared towards your business, so a little bit um, more around like financials and uh, marketing. Note that these trainings are free and will be ongoing, so keep your eyes open for topics that come in the next few months. The purpose of our webinar today is to share, again, what's up in downtown Westminster. We have with us Downtown Development and Construction Manager John Burke, who's going to share the history around the acquisition of the old Westminster Mall site, the vision and implementation of Downtown Westminster, current projects, and long-term uh, planning and development around the site. John, if you want to join us, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Shelby, and good morning, and good morning, everybody, on the webinar today. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, well, I should say it's always a pleasure. I'm home working remote um, office a couple days a week at this point in time to uh, check in on the active construction and everything that's going on in downtown. I appreciate all business owners out there just navigating through this pandemic and where we are today. Uh, hopefully there's a silver lining and we're able to learn a whole lot over the past 12 months uh, in this work, remote work environment as well as still actively super busy. I think that's where uh, downtown Westminster has definitely been that. We didn't we didn't miss a beat last year. A lot of construction going on and new retailers uh, opening up this year. So I'm gonna share uh, a lot about, uh, yeah, the bat, I guess the history and uh, also into where we are today and where we're going. And like Shelby said, uh, I do look forward to answering any questions that you have uh, at the end of today's session. So Shelby, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and pitch to the next slide. So many of you remember the old Westminster Mall. I know as a kid myself growing up in the area, this was a, a frequent haunt of mine, uh, the game room and Spencer's and the food court, Orange Julius, and uh, the death of me was Cinnabon when that opened up. I <laughs> uh, used to love uh, going to the mall and just uh, hanging out and people watching, right? I mean, I think that was the biggest thing for the mall itself was uh, that was the major gathering uh, space uh, for many of us in Westminster and the surrounding communities, and quite frankly, uh, around the region. I mean, we've met people throughout the duration of the downtown Westminster project that, uh, you know, we used to travel to the mall from Cheyenne frequently, or from Colorado Springs, or Grand Junction, or even Kansas City. Uh, we've met people that uh, this would be their, you know, summer trip was, hey, we've got to go check out the Westminster Mall and do some shopping before school started that fall. And so it really was not only a local, but a regional draw for the city with a million square feet of retail at its heyday. Uh, next slide, please. And with that, you know, we have some kind of throwback uh, pictures, the old mall and the food area, the center, you know, the balloons. Uh, that used to get just a place to be with um, uh, the Westminster Police Department doing presentations between Santa Claus and the Christmas, the Easter Bunny, you know, Halloween, you name it. Uh, that was the, the gathering place. Uh, hey, I'll meet you over the balloons and then we'll go shopping from there. And uh, this, again, it was a place to be, a place of, of connection, a place of community. And as the, the mall started to die down, you know, after the Flatirons Mall opened up in Broomfield in 2001, that really was the beginning of the end of the Westminster Mall. 
In fact, in the bottom right corner where that Easter bunny is, if I showed you the rest of that picture, you'd see a store closing signs right behind there. It's so, so sad uh, for this community. And so one of the things that the city did is, is as the Westminster Mall was was dying and truly we were, I would say we made national uh, publication of this uh, thing called the, the Dying Mall Magazine. And in all seriousness, the, the Westminster Mall was on the cover of Dying Mall Magazine uh, back in the uh, the early 2000s. And that was, that was not a good thing for the city. And, and importantly, you might ask, why would the city be so concerned about a mall? Well, not only was this a community gathering place, but importantly for the city of Westminster as a community that is around 67% dependent upon sales tax generation, the mall at that point in time accounted for right around 10 to 12% of the entire city's sales tax revenue. And so when you think about taking a, you know, a 10 to 15% hit on your revenue projections, the city was very interested in seeing this redevelop into a thriving retail area again. And so with that, next slide, please, Shelby. The city started to work with the, the owner of the mall back then, Sherman Dreyfus and their team, and started thinking about what would be next? How could we redevelop this particular 100 acre site that was in the core of the city with fantastic access and you know a regional draw? And so back in 2007 through 2015, the city literally entertained five different master developers to reprogram, repurpose the entire downtown Westminster, at that point in time, the Westminster Mall. And as you can see from some of these images, what happened time and time again, and, and again, this is important to note, that time frame, you remember back in 2008, 2009, this was the Great Recession. There wasn't a lot of major developers that were willing to risk and or invest into a new redevelopment project. And because of that, the vision that the master developers continue to bring forward kept getting lesser and lesser and lesser. They wanted to do less on this site than what the city wanted to see happen for the community. You know, when we went out and actually partnered with and did dozens and dozens of public outreach, one of the things we continued to hear from the public was, City of Westminster doesn't have a true downtown. And when you think about some of our adjoining communities, you know, from Arvada to, uh, you know, obviously downtown Denver, Boulder, they all have these really great downtowns. Westminster does have a beautiful historic part of the city, but not a true just core economic driver, community gathering place. I mean, the things, you know, office, all the pieces that you really want to see in a, in a downtown. And so with that, in 2015, the city decided to take a little bit of a different approach. And instead of trying to hire a master developer that would just take over the entire 100 acre site, they brought in some consultants and our, our staff to really sell this off on a lot by lot, block by block approach. And that's what we've been doing now since around 2015, 26 timeframe. Next slide, please, shall we? So one of the beautiful things is many of you know in development and real estate, it's all about three things, location, location and location. It's kind of like, a, it's it's a broken record in, in the development world, but it's so true. And that's why everybody knows it. So when you think about the location, of not only the city of Westminster, but specifically downtown Westminster in proximity to some of the major areas from office commercial, downtown Denver to Boulder, were literally situated right between the two on the US 36 corridor. I always like to tell some of our, our friends uh, in development community, you know, we're not as dense as Denver or not as granola as Boulder, but we're kind of both in between, right? A little bit of uh, the greenish Boulder or a little bit of the dense Denver. And we like to think we're that perfect blend between the two so that you can easily get all the amenities of a downtown feel, but also still have the ability to jump on a trail to see beautiful parks and open space. And as we start to get into the vision of the downtown Westminster, you'll see that we have 18% of the site, you know, acres of, of open space, or I should say parks and very programmed areas for uh, kind of gathering and walking around the proximity of the downtown Westminster site. So again, adjacent to US 36, so my little bullets here, 11 miles to Denver Union Station, uh, 16 miles to Boulder. We got 35 minutes out to Denver International Airport, 
what are the key things from a transit component in addition to the commuter rail? Uh, their Flatiron Flyer is a 15 minute direct connection to Denver Union Station from the US 36 Sheridan uh, RTD station there. And that one is, I was kind of baffled to learn this, but RTD, the US 36 station is the busiest bus station on RTD's network in the entire metro area with over 500 buses a day in great access to again, both Denver Union Station and, and Boulder itself. And then lastly, the commuter rail. We've actually been having very uh, recent conversations with both RTD and Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad on the extension of three miles from Westminster Station to downtown Westminster. And I'm really excited to say that that uh, was some uh, infrastructure bills that are being pushed forward. Uh, I'm excited to see hopefully the next five to 10 years to have a station up, up and operational in the downtown Westminster site. Uh, next slide, please, Shelby. So back to as I was saying, as the city went out and started collecting information and literally creating images of what a downtown could look like it, with vision boards and, and the public got to participate by putting, you know, dots on different pictures like, oh, I like this kind of, you know, this density, this tall of building or, you know, single story buildings or different, you know, parks and uh, trails and, you know, places to gather. And with that, we hired a company called Tori Gallus that started to put those pieces together in a site plan and started to put the massing of these buildings together. And so with that, we identified on this site, the 100 acre site, we could literally have around 5,000 new residents living in the downtown of Westminster. Currently, we have over 500 living in the existing buildings. Uh, so we're, we're definitely on our way. Uh, over 750 million square, I'm sorry, 750,000, thank you for that correction, uh, square feet of retail. So we're getting less than the million that was there with the mall, but still significant of some of the mom and pop and local stores we'd love to have as part of the fabric of the new downtown site. We do have space for over 2 million square feet of office. You see those towers on the right-hand side of the screen adjacent to US 36. Those what we call our D blocks, the ones adjacent to the highway, are, is really where you'll see that density with office uh, buildings. We do have, and I'll share later, some of the current office developers that we have under contract to build the first phase of office in the downtown Westminster site. Additionally, we can hold over 300 uh, plus hotel rooms uh, right now, we have the Origin Hotel, which is a boutique hotel uh, that has 125 rooms and a little conference center and the female restaurant. Again, I'll talk about that more in detail in a minute, uh, as well as we're looking at developing an entertainment district in downtown. Now, many of you may recall down in you know, Glendale, uh, City of Greeley, uh, other areas, I know Grand Junction in the city, or actually in the state of Colorado that have these entertainment districts. And it's all about creating that energy and and activation and the vibrancy of a downtown by enabling places where we can shut down the roads, have a stage set up, have some food trucks pull up, you know, have different gatherings where you can buy a glass of wine in one location and walk across the street, sit out in the center square and enjoy the concert with your family, eating some local um, artisans, um, you know, food, uh, chef driven restaurants, etc. So that entertainment district is an item we're uh, taking to our city council here later this fall. Uh, to share with them what that's going to look like, not only for downtown, but that ordinance will enable entertainment districts uh, at a few different areas within the city of Westminster long term. Uh, a couple last things, uh, part of the vision for downtown was have a sustainable approach. We are requiring LEED Silver certified buildings with our private developers. And so far, there's the Eden Street project. They got their LEED Silver certification through the United States uh, Green Building Council or USGBC for short. Uh, so that was fantastic, as well as the Ascent apartment complex that's right on 88th Avenue. They also received their uh, LEED Silver certification last year. Uh, last thing is a direct ac access to mass transit. We talked a bit about that with the RTD US 36 station, as well as the future commuter rail station. And importantly, and I didn't mention this, the US 36 uh, commuting trail that runs right through the east uh, side of the site. And again, that connects Denver to Boulder to uh, Cherry Creek and everywhere in between. And so that's a very highly utilized uh, bicycle trail and pedestrian trail that runs through this area. Uh, next slide, please, Shelby. So with that, I just thought I'd kind of do a 10,000 foot overview of the current projects and some of the new retailers that are, are open and some that are, are opening soon. 
And uh, then we'll dive into each one of these in detail, but you see just on high level, we do have uh, starting at the, the top left, the Tatter Cover Bookstore. Uh, they'll be located in the ground floor of the Origin Hotel, uh, right on the corner of 89th and um, Westminster Boulevard. They do have a building permit. Uh, they are ready to pull and start uh, construction. If things go really well, and again, supply chain issues like we're all seeing are slowing things down a little bit, but they're hoping to get up uh, open by November this year, uh, which would be absolutely fantastic as a Denver staple uh, to have their first uh, Westminster location nearby. Additionally, Lashing Company that's in the top middle there, they're in the Eaton Street uh, project. They just opened up uh, this past year. Uh, Hope Pediatric Dentist, same thing. They opened up earlier this year, I think it was back in March, and so they're operating now. Uh, bottom uh, towards the bottom right, the 100% chiropractic also opened up just a few weeks ago, actually in early July. Uh, so we do have a chiropractor on site as well. Tappenberger, you'll see that they do have a site uh, right on 88th and Westminster Boulevard that they're currently building out. Uh, they do hope to be open by Labor Day of this year and they're making good progress. I mentioned the Origin Hotel earlier, which uh, this is their second location in Colorado. The first was the origin at Red Rocks. So if you ever go to a concert out of Red Rocks and you're looking for a place to stay, right near that I-70 corridor, they're right off I-70 on the north side in Golden. Next is a Sweet Bloom Coffee Shop. They opened also in March. Uh, they were formerly Two Rivers Coffee there in Arvada and I love their coffee. They really wanna be part of the downtown Westminster site. So they partnered with Sweet Bloom and opened up their shop also this past March. Uh, Alamo Draft House Theater, many of you may have uh, attended and gone to see movies or uh, had a drink or food over at Pandora's Box. They did open in July of 2019, but sadly through the pandemic, they shut down. Uh, even worse, they went through Chapter 11 bankruptcy and thankfully they've uh, come out of that very strong and they just reopened here, uh, actually about, uh, I think it was July 14th that they opened up. Uh, so they're back in operation, actually it was June 14th, I take that back. And so they're, uh, you know, with limited movies uh, being pushed out by Hollywood, they're still uh, kind of struggling through that, but super excited to see people get back into live uh, theater events like that. And then lastly is a famille, a uh, little story about them. They're a, a French uh, uh, kind of brassier, Colorado focused, inspired, and uh, they are operational now in the uh, lower level of the hotel. Uh, next slide, please. So I will now just kind of do a maybe a deeper dive into each one of these buildings and give you a little kind of behind the scenes look at uh, each of these development partners for downtown. You know, one of the big things, again, as we talked to the community was, you know, the gathering places. I remember going to the mall and you probably remember we had the, I think it was uh, three um, movie theaters inside the mall and five uh, screens on the outside and that, uh, that um, a kind of outdoor parking lot closer to Harlan. And so we knew that moviegoers love to be in the Westminster Mall, now the downtown Westminster site. And Alamo Draft House has such a unique pairing with how they engage uh, in unique uh, uh, movies and some of the throwbacks. You know, they'll do things like when Harry met Sally and, you know, Backdraft and things like that. And it's just fun to go in and actually see it on the big screen if you never got to see those movies on a, on a big screen before, as well as uh, not only renting out some of the theaters for they did some gaming uh, programs where you'd have these uh, folks go in and literally playing uh, video games competitively against others across the nation. They would do that in some of their uh, theaters uh, or you can rent out a theater. So if you had, say, a, uh, uh, any sort of an event where you want to do a private showing of something, you can actually rent out one of the smaller theaters for that. Uh, in addition to showing a lot of the blockbusters that are hopefully continue to come out and, and see them back in operation fully. So, so great partner. Uh, actually, they got uh, some of their locally owned business partners here in Colorado. So very focused on making this a vibrant, uh, active location. And one of the things when they first came in, we wanted to see something uh, unique architectural wise. So my old counterpart, Sarah Numello, who was an uh, architect by trade, land planner, uh, really loved, loved this art deco feel. So she literally kind of hand drafted some of the things we wanted to see on this building and to almost credit, they went out and did it and deployed it well. And so I love the fact we got some neon and kind of that throwback to that art deco look uh, with some of the posters and architecture on this building. So a lot of fun Again, glad to see them back open as of uh, yeah, June 17th there and, and uh, operational and look forward to seeing many of you out there watching the movie or eating at Pandora's box. Uh, next slide, please. So the Eden Street Apartments, one of the 
first partners we brought to the downtown was this group of coal and company out of Denver, a longstanding uh, developer in the Denver community, as well as uh, Mile High Development. And they partnered with us to bring in affordable housing as one of our very first projects in downtown Westminster. So we had 118 units. And when I say affordable, it's, it's deeply affordable, 30% to 80% of the area median income. And so the second this building opened up, which I'm gonna tell you, it doesn't look affordable. It's absolutely beautiful. Oz Architecture did a great job of designing this building and opening that up. And you know they already had a wait list the day they opened and they still do. And it's absolutely fantastic, love it. They do about 27,000 square feet of retail. I mentioned those three retailers that have already opened. Uh, there's still plenty of space. Uh, we're hoping to bring in some different restaurants and brew pubs uh, in the ground floor of this building, but it's uh, absolutely spectacular. Like I mentioned, they did get their LEED Silver certified and that 38% uh, AMI for this building. Next slide, please. The next building is the Ascent Westminster. This is where both Tappenberger and Sweet Bloom are located. Again, 255 units of residential. Importantly with this one, the bottom bullet there, 10% of those units are workforce. So 26 out of the 255 are what we call workforce housing, which are income qualified between 80 and 120% uh, area of median income. So as those units become available, they rotate throughout the entire building, which is a beautiful thing to have that entry level for folks like that, that want to be in this beautiful building that, uh, you know, has a rooftop pool and great amenities internal. And so they have uh, just a great access to this, this building. Uh, they also got their LEED Silver certification here this past year. And again, they have about 22,000 square feet of retail. And we have a few different uh, uh, retailers that are working hard on getting their leases executed and starting to work in uh, getting open uh, later this year. Next slide, please. And Shelby, let me know if my, my note there that my connection's bad, so hopefully the clarity is okay. Um, but if it's not, please stop me and I'll, I'll try to reset. So the next one is the Origin Hotel. Can I mention they uh, have the uh, Tatter Cover bookstores getting ready to build out their space in the corner of 89th and Westminster Boulevard. Uh, as well as a familial restaurant. Some one of the fun stories with the familial, if you're familiar with the St. Julian in Boulder, the restaurant hotel, they um, the one of the chefs actually came from the St. Julian. So during the pandemic, he and a lot of his staff were uh, sadly laid off, but the, knowing that this was gonna be opening, they literally brought their entire crew over. So within days, their entire team went from one location to St. Julian, then opened up the familial within just a couple of weeks. And the food is absolutely fantastic. The menu is well thought, thought out, and there's really something for everybody from brunch uh, to dinner throughout the day. So 125 Key Boutique uh, Hotel, and again with that chef driven restaurant. And there also is some event space. So if you're looking for a small conference room or a larger uh, venue, uh, please do contact the Origin Hotel. They do have some wonderful space. Uh, and obviously have some of the catering available for that as well. Next slide. So this is the Aspire Westminster building, which is currently under construction. Uh, this is probably most initially well known for the big tower crane that was up that was lit up like a Christmas tree with the LED lights on it uh, for many, many months. I would drive around town and be able to see that uh, tower crane at night and uh, just knew that these guys were working hard. Obviously the pandemic hit and slowed things down a little bit, but uh, they are targeting opening up uh, the first phase of the building here in September. Uh, was starting to get occupancy up throughout the next uh, six to 12 months uh, with 226 uh, residential units and 38,000 square feet of retail. And very importantly, if you're familiar with the Stanley Marketplace, uh, we do have a market hall on the ground floor of this that faces the central square of downtown. And Mark Shaker, the operator of the Stanley Marketplace in Aurora is gonna be the same operator here. He, when public with that, I think it's on our website that shows that announcement, they're gonna be calling it Westminster Alley. And this is a great place where you get common beverage stations and about four or five uh, unique uh, food vendors that'll be in that space as well. So they are working hard to uh, get their final plans uh, into our building uh, division for review. And they plan to open that up by May of next year. So they got, got a lot of work to do with that market hall, even though the apartment building itself will be open now this fall. So again, 38,000 square feet of retail, LEED Silver certified. Uh, additionally, 23 of those units, 10% uh, are workforce housing. And I just talked about the market all. Next slide, please. Uh, this one is the, the next, uh, I guess, mixed use uh, residential that's just north of the Aspire. This is Westminster Peak. 
one kind of fun thing about this, uh, we were just in the final throes of design and negotiation with them right before the pandemic hit. And no, no joke, we issued this building permit to start construction on March 24th of 2020. Our team internally with community development, because we'd already gone to a mostly online platform, the second the pandemic hit and we started to shut down offices and everybody went remote, they didn't miss a beat. Again, we were able to issue those permits. Our building inspection team and construction inspectors were ready and willing to safely go out and inspect and watch the progress of the construction happen. And uh, this project is moving well uh, ahead of schedule. In fact, they're going to open up their first phase uh, this fall uh, with the second phase opening up in early spring. Again, 274 units, all market rates, so no uh, workforce housing in this one. Uh, 17,000 square feet of retail that they're still uh, working on LOIs to uh, uh, get retailers in those spaces and then also required to have lead silver certification on the building. Next slide, please. So one of the big ideas for downtown Westminster was in addition to office, in addition to multifamily residential, in addition to hotels, is to have ownership residential. And so we had issued out a letter of interest a couple of years ago and solicited input from a number of developers uh, here in the metro area and across the U.S. to build for sale residential in townhomes and condominiums. And so importantly, this project, the one you see on the top right, just broke ground this week. In fact, Monday, they're out uh, right on Harlan Street between 90th and 91st. Uh, they will be constructing 34 for sale townhomes. Uh, they already have a, a reservation list of over 50 people that have signed up that have shown interest of actually owning a piece of the downtown Westminster with their own townhome project. Following on though, so if you missed out on that first phase opportunity, they will be doing a second phase on the east half of that same block uh, starting up early next year with another 17 townhomes and importantly, around 20 condominiums that will front Westminster Boulevard. So that project is right now in the design phase. You see on the uh, kind of on the top left there, we've been working through different design charrettes with their architect uh, for that project. And then on the bottom left, you see this thing called Westminster Booner. Uh, this is actually a, a city, I want to call it a glorified alley, but a Booner, a Dutch term, is really a pedestrian vehicle, uh, bicycle friendly thoroughfare where it's activated by uh, you know, different chairs and, you know, Adirondack chairs and tables. And we're going to put a fun little uh, chessboard in the middle of this public way uh, that will also connect to a small pocket park that we're building as a city. And again, it's just a way to engage the community to enjoy a nice little stroll on a summer evening and be able to connect with your neighbors right in this new downtown Westminster site. Uh, next slide, please. Now this one is our, our first office developer in downtown. So Schnitzer West, uh, they are right now through the architectural review phase of their very first uh, office building. This one is located right north of the Eden Street project. You can actually see the rendering of the Eden Street to the south, um, you know, kind of behind the office image and right across from Central Square, which is where that pavilion is. And so this first building is around 200,000 square feet, eight stories tall and it'll be a speculative office building. And they are right now getting ready to enter into our official development plan phase uh, this fall and start construction on this project next year. In addition to this, in that project summary, you see it shows 650,000 square feet of class A office space. So this is the first of three buildings. The next two buildings will be across Eaton Street on block D2 of downtown. And again, you can go to our downtownwestminster.us website and download our current marking brochure, we call it really it's a block by block plan of who has what projects under contract and what their anticipated timing is. So again, super excited about getting our first office. And, and I'll tell you, a lot of folks in this, I'll hopefully be able to call it post pandemic at some point soon. The design of this building would be such that having the ability to have, you know, uh, improved airflow, improved spaces within their non-touched doors, right? Uh, elevators that just, as you come up to them, they know where you want to go. And so just understanding all the technology that will go into this, I'm really excited to see this lease so quickly. And particularly when you compare it to a lot of the older um, office space, not only necessarily in Westminster, but importantly in downtown Denver or Boulder, 
you're seeing a, a big resurgence of retrofitting older buildings. And I think we're going to get a big draw of getting folks that are just really excited about getting into a brand new class A office space that was designed in this uh, kind of post pandemic time frame. Next slide, please. So one of the last things I'll talk about here today is really the city's investment into the infrastructure. So I mentioned the RTD US 36 transit station that's on the other side of US 36. One of the big moves we're making the starting construction here this October is a pedestrian connection underneath Sheridan that'll connect downtown Westminster right to the US 36 transit station. So you see in this image, uh, not only do you see the bicycles, pedestrians, but an autonomous vehicle that would transport from downtown at certain drop-off locations right to the US 36 station. So really excited about seeing that project move forward. That's about an 18 month construction project. So uh, by early 22, we'll see that open and operational. A few of the other things out there, again, the US 36 bike trail, uh, we did have our parks team built a little shelter with a bike repair station with that, a fountain. You know, so we see that as a great location just to gather and overlook all the active construction. And then again, the city's put in uh, all the horizontal infrastructure from roads, water, sewer, storm, regional detention facilities, et cetera, uh, streetscape. And then we're really focused over the next six to 12 months to start building some of those park amenities from different, uh, you know, either play equipment or pop jets or things like that. Another stage uh, gathering spaces within Center Park, uh, kind of micro dog parks in the area as well. So look forward to see more of that continue to layer on in, in downtown Westminster as well as the city invests in this site. Next slide. And of course, one of the most uh, exciting things, hopefully uh, many of you on this call are listening into this webinar later, uh, we're able to participate in things like the Harvest Fest, which is the photo you see here in this image. We had 35,000 people show up to that event back in 2019 in October. Absolutely beautiful, you know, Remax and some of the balloons. We do this balloon glow, uh, such a fantastic night uh, with our local vendors and retailers. So uh, hopefully we'll get back to doing that again someday because that was such a great time and uh, something will continue to grow in over time. The uh, This year, you might have noticed on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday nights, uh, our parks team in uh, concert with Elmo Draft House have put together a series of drive-in movies. So they're also showing those on the D blocks and for I think it's $30, bring everybody you want in your car that you can fit. And then you also get a $10 voucher to Alamo Draft House, uh, Pandora's Box. And so great partnership with them to uh, see that happen this summer. And then again, I mentioned the Entertainment District, uh, Common Consumption, again, just another way for us to activate the downtown. And then our continued focus on just bringing more office buildings, uh, condominiums, townhomes, as well as future uh, apartment complexes and residential, probably mid mid-story type buildings that uh, will get that density of the 5,000 residents someday in downtown Westminster. Uh, next slide, please, as I think we're wrapping up here. So uh, again, thank you for your time this morning and in, in, uh, kind of logging in and seeing this virtually. I would have much rather have done this in person so I could see, uh, see your eyes directly and then respond to questions. But Shelly, I'll turn it back over to you and see if we've had any, any questions populate while I've been uh, kind of rambling for the past 20 or so minutes. <laughs> Thank you, John. So much great information and so many wonderful things going on in the downtown. Um, this is our time to open it up for questions that you may have for John to answer. We're going to cross our fingers that we're not going to have technical difficulties again this time. Um, but I also want to um, uh, let you guys know that if for any reason you do come up with like a burning question, um, you always are free to reach out to John and myself and we're happy to touch base with you um, on anything that may come up after this webinar. And I also want to make a plug for if you are excited about what you've heard today and you want to see it in person, um, this webinar is going to be followed up with an in-person tour of the downtown site um, that's going to be coming up on August 18th from 7.30 to 8.30 in the morning. So if you want to RSVP for that, um, send an email to me. I'll pop over the contact information in just a second and let me know if you want to attend just so that way we have an idea of how many people to expect. All right, so it looks like I have successfully got questions turned on this time. So John, bear with me one second. Let's see if I can't get to these. All right, somebody had problem, problems getting the slides, but it looks like they were able to get it. 
Um, looks like Matthew made a note uh, about Edward Jones just signing a contract for 8877 Eaton. That is fantastic. Well, welcome. Super excited to see you guys uh, start to work on tenant improvement and get open. That's fantastic. And it looks like Dwayne on here says, what was the website address for additional information? Uh, so John, if you want to share that, I will make sure that that gets included on the PowerPoint whenever that gets um, uploaded to our website. Yeah, that'd be great. So it's fairly simple, but it is uh, www.downtownwestminster, and that's all one word, and that is .us. So downtownwestminster.us is the website. Uh, you'll have my contact information, as well as uh, recent news articles as they've been being published. Uh, so it's always a great place just to go and, and find out the latest, greatest information. All right. Looks like that's all the questions we have on there. Um, anybody else have anything they want to throw in? Um, feel free to upload it now. Otherwise, I will uh, switch over to the final slide here um, with John's contact information. Uh, my information is on there as well. Um, again, before we post this, I'll make sure that the uh, websites are listed on there for your convenience and accessing them later. Uh, I'm not seeing anything else come over. So at this point, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up the webinar today. Uh, I want to thank you, John, for joining us and sharing all of the ongoings and your insight into what's going on in downtown Westminster. And a huge thank you to our business community for joining us today. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. Thanks, Shelby. Thanks, everybody. Look forward to seeing you on the uh, August 18th. It'll be actually fun to walk around and uh, boots on the ground. So take care. Yes.